Hey everyone, Matt Basarsik from Razor Emporium. Today we're going to be doing the top 10 ways to stop ingrown hairs in their tracks. Let's get started. Tip number one, grain map. I know it sounds redundant if you've been in this hobby for a while, but you've got to look at your, your the direction of the grain on your hair. Everyone always thinks, okay, well, my hair in my cheeks goes down, the hair in my neck goes up. I just got to go down and got to go up. Wrong. You have to take a weekend, take a few days, if you're able to do it with your job, your situation, and grow the hair out. I've got two or three days of growth here, and even with just a few days, you should be able to look and get some general ideas of what's going on. So I can see that on my cheeks, hair is coming down. On my chin, it actually starts going sideways, so sometimes I'll actually go like this to go across the grain. On my neck, it generally starts coming down, it kind of comes down a little bit spiral to the to the right side but then right around the equator of my Adam's apple kind of this imaginary line where my Adam's apple is it actually switches direction for no reason so like down here it starts spiraling to the side and these ones kind of spiral up and this ones again kind of go to one side these ones go up so I know that about myself so when I run a razor across my face I'm always thinking with the grain, with the grain, you know, with the grain, with the grain. I'm not going arbitrarily across the grain and causing ingrown hairs. So you got to know your grain map. Number two, use a brush. People like to think that the wet shaving hobby has brushes because maybe you just don't want to touch the shaving cream or you're lazy or you want to feel fancy. Wrong. This is an essential tool that is used to not only build a lather on your face, not just paint it on from a bowl, but building a lather, but more importantly, uh, you know, exfoliating and lifting up the hair, preparing the beard. And if you have a boar brush like this guy, the boar bristles are stiffer, they're more scrubby feeling, and the ends actually have like a little hook to it. And after repeated use, you'll see them even split and turn into two hooks. And those little hooks do a fantastic job at grabbing and digging out ingrown hair. So if you have little hairs that like to lay flat against your skin or start working their way in, as you bring the brush around, it'll actually lift those hairs up and then you can come by with your razor and shave them down. Use a brush. Number three, cold water. <laughs> I know that this may sound like a shock to some people. There's nothing wrong with taking a, a lovely hot shower and hot showers feel fantastic and shaving with hot water and, and hot shaving cream feels fantastic. But if you're someone who suffers from ingrown hairs, at least give it a shot. Don't say, I need another brush. I need a new soap. I need a new razor. I need all this stuff. Just try the free thing in your bathroom, the cold water. Turn on the cold spigot, really work it, work your face, really bring the water up, splash it. And, and then make your lather with the cold water. You're gonna find that when the skin gets cold, it's taut. When it's taut, the hairs actually wanna stand up better. It's almost like when you get goosebumps. And when you come by with your razor, you have a much more comfortable shave. You're less likely to get uh, the skin to pull and stretch and have the hair go back underneath the skin level and cause an ingrown hair. And it feels refreshing. When you're all done and, you're, and your skin returns to room temperature, you're gonna feel even even closer than you thought. So just do one pass, cold water, and you'll go up and say, oh man, that's feeling great. Number four, preparation. If you're not already using a pre-shave, consider getting one. I'm not a big fan of the oils, but I like the Parasso products, and a lot of other people have like pre-shave soaps. Those are fantastic. Anything to get your beard prepared for shaving is gonna help out. I know I personally couldn't survive without a pre-shave product underneath even the nicest of shaving creams. Don't just paint your lather on. I see all these guys, they, they want to get the fancy bowl and they'll spend five minutes whipping up this beautiful, lovely whipped cream consistency shaving cream. And then, oh, I'm ready to go. No, you're not. Spend all that time on your face. Use a brush, really work it, get lots of water, hydrate, 
Lather, 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 scrub, 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 scrub. I always do lots of circular motions, lots of you know big scrubbing motions. At the end, I may kind of go up. I like to kind of go up to kind of just make sure the hairs, as you know, the, the shaving cream is up underneath the hair as much as possible. My skin is prepared. I'm ready to shave. I've built all that wonderful lather on my face, not in a bowl. Number five, shave after a shower. So. I always complain that when I shave here on the film set, it's no fun, my skin's not ready to go, and I have to, you know, always have pre-shave product and lots of prep time. But if you're at home or in the hotel room or at the gym or whatever, take a shower, warm shower, use the washcloth, really scrub around your face, make sure everything's prepared, nice steaming hot shower, you know, use a face care product if you if you use one of you know, face soap, face wash. Um, you know, that's always a great thing to help get your skin ready, get any excess oils off the skin. Uh, it's gonna mean for the best results possible is to take a shower before you shave. And if you're someone who likes to shower shave, that's fantastic, you know, for normal circumstances. But if you're finding yourself getting ingrown hairs while shower shaving, maybe do some soul searching, maybe do some thinking about your routine. Maybe you need to get out, have that cold water, Maybe you need to be looking at the grain map better, building a better lather. Just because it's slick and hydrating and super hot, it may not be the best thing for your skin. So try taking the shower first, getting out, and then shaving at the sink. Number six, get stiff. <laughs> but seriously, guys, if you've been using a cartridge razor, if you've been using an electric razor, if you've even been using a double edge, sometimes these options are not the best for someone who's getting chronic ingrown hairs, serious ingrown hairs. I've found that whenever I've you know gotten to a tailspin of you know a, a bad cycle of having ingrown hairs for a week or two, if I switch over to an injector style razor like the supply razor or a straight razor or a shavette, something that has a stiffer blade, I end up reducing or eliminating the ingrown hairs altogether. I can go back to double edge then or back to whatever other kind of razor, but sometimes a stiffer blade is, is a great thing for ingrown hairs. Straight razor, you know, shave it, injector, artist club style, whatever you want to try. But try these other kinds of stiffer blades. They end up kind of riding the skin a little bit more. They're less likely to have the hair kind of get cut below the skin level because they are so stiff. Um, so give it a shot, it may work for you too. Try a stiffer blade. Number seven, one pass only. I know we've all watched countless YouTube videos and read millions of shaving blogs and shaving chat room posts about how you do a three pass shave, four pass shave, five pass shave. Guess what? If you are suffering from ingrown hairs, your mission is not how close of a shave you can get because someone's going to walk up with a credit card and arbitrarily you know, test to see how close your shave performance was. That's not your objective. Your objective is to look in the mirror and be happy and to not be full of ingrown hairs and be self-conscious about the way you look. That's your objective is to look the best you can look and enjoy your shave and not have a painful, sore face from ingrown hairs. So one pass only. And that means with the grain. So for me, again, we talked about grain map, down on my cheeks, up on my lower neck, kind of across on my mid neck. So figure out what with the grain means for you and stick to one pass. Don't try to go for the BBS, go for the DFS, damn fine shave. One pass only. Number eight, moisturize. You don't have to necessarily use Parasso White, although it's one of my favorite balms out there, as you guys may know. But try switching away from the alcohol-based splashes and, or things that have menthol in it and try using something that's more of a lotion, a balm, something that has a lot of nutrients for your skin. It's gonna make your skin feel more supple. It's gonna help promote any healing on your skin. You know, when you use alcohol, it feels fantastic. It smells fantastic. And it's that kind of classic, you know, experience that you wanna have. And I get it, I totally get it. But if you're someone who's got ingrown hairs, that alcohol can actually dry your skin out, cause it to contract and kind of, you know, exacerbate the situation that you're already in with ingrown hair. So try moisturizing, try it for a week, 10 days, and see if it does not help improve your situation. Moisturize. Number nine, frequency. What that means is try to get yourself into a routine when you're shaving consistently. For me, for years, 
I was doing every other day. So that's about 48 hours of time in between one shave to the next. But just in the last couple months, I've been switching to every day and a half. So more like 36 hours. So one day it's going to be in the morning, the next day it's going to be at night. And it just keeps on alternating. And for me, that's been even more fantastic than every other day. So I think the most important thing is to find a frequency that works good for you. If that means every day, every other day, every two days, whatever it is. You have to do some trials, some experiments, figure out what's working, what's not. But once you get it, stick on a schedule. Don't go five days without shaving if, you've, if you're used to doing every day or every other day. What you're going to do is that hair is going to get longer and it's going to start digging back down, especially if you have hairs that like to lay flat on your skin. So you got to train those hairs to be used to be shaving on a normal schedule. Keep them regimented and get yourself into a routine. And finally, number 10, let it heal. Now that you've gotten through, hopefully, an irritation-free shave, or at least you have all the tools to build you on that path towards an irritation-free shave, make sure to allow your skin some time to heal. One little trick I used to do uh, when I was working in corporate America and had to make sure I looked nice the next day was to shave at night so that my skin could kind of relax, heal. If I did have any irritation, by the time I woke up, it didn't look so bad. But the last thing you want is to have that big shave before the big event or some meeting you need to be at and you got red irritation or nicks or cuts or ingrown hairs that are all inflamed and not looking so pretty. So give yourself a little time to heal. Get into a routine of maybe shaving at night or at least a couple hours before you need to be somewhere so your skin can kind of calm down. There's nothing worse than showing up and everything's not looking so good. So those are my top 10 tips. I thought of a secret number 11 of skin stretching, but what is your secret number 11 or 12 or 13? What did I miss? What did I not think about? If you do leave a number 11, you're entered in to win this, the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. That's all I got for you guys. I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully it can help reduce irritation, ingrown hairs in your life. And we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks guys.